before we commence the new chapter, I would like to request that you help the channel reach 3,000 subscribers as swiftly as possible. In this chapter, we observe our protagonist standing beside the king, a bull that instilled fear in a group of Orin and his followers. The king addressed Tessie Jun as if he were a lion, while even the dragon Orin was taken aback, questioning the presence of the Great Black Dragon. The 99th floor introduced itself as the Great Black Dragon, possessing the ability to assess rare magical elements, rendering any form of deceit ineffective. Our protagonist requested the cat to approach and press the subscribe button, leaving the same message of support for the channel, which indicated that June desired this outcome. He examined the items possessed by Orin and his followers, who immediately rushed towards him. Orin remained pleased, as he envisioned winning the grand prize, knowing that the Black Dragon, the most powerful being, was in control of the tower. If he favored an item from outside the tower, then creatures like the king would have nothing to offer him. He could potentially become the strongest entity in the tower if the great Black Dragon favored the cat. He promptly turned his bag around and retrieved a piece of the cylinder along with nail clippers, lighters, and a coffee cup. After laying everything out on the ground, Orin bent down before the tower farmer and asked him to examine the items. S.E. June knelt in contemplation, realizing that despite the items being from the earth, none were of any use to Orin. The only things he had brought were discarded items, such as a used roll and a cleaner that was almost trash. However, a question arose in his mind regarding the source of the goblin named Scaraman these seemingly worthless items. As S.E. Jun pondered, the black hat immediately caught his attention. The farmer informed them that he had an eye for valuable things and was anticipating the arrival of the great black dragon. Orin explained that the item in his hand was called a roll cleaner which possessed a magical adhesive capable of removing dust or fur from any surface. The black cat seemed to enjoy this revelation, prompting S.E. Jun to inquire about the cost. Upon hearing Orin's belief that he had struck gold, S.E. Jun immediately began rubbing his hands together in greed, informing him that the roll would cost 50 towers. S.E. Jun's coins began to scrutinize the roll suspiciously, while the followers behind the black cat speculated that, Orin had acquired the role in just five years for a mere 50 tower coins, expecting to receive tenfold the reward from the great black dragon. They found the cat remarkable, as it showed no fear even in the presence of the black dragon, confidently raising even Orin, believed he possessed a talent for being the merchant cat when he inquired of the great black dragon whether it wished to purchase this product. He added that the cylinder was a magical item from outside the tower, making it exceedingly difficult to find elsewhere. Suddenly, he let out a deep sigh as he spoke earnestly, casting a warning glance at the black cat, reiterating that any form of deceit would not be tolerated. He immediately began working on it, pulling out the adhesive paper while informing the black cat that the cylinder was a consumer product made with adhesive that could be easily peeled off in the end. The precious item Aaron was selling turned out to be nothing more than trash, and there was not a single magical element present. Soon Zwos carried a certain authority that caused Tarin to tremble. He attempted to persuade John, asserting that the cylinder was undoubtedly magical, infused with enchantments. His desperation to sell the item nearly led him to speak it out loud. The black dragon must have been mistaken, but suddenly, he recognized the grave error he had made. However, even after closing his mouth, it was too late, and the Bull King immediately began to strike the ground beneath him. The Bull King was indeed a rather small creature, visibly enraged and adorned in a striking shade of red. His eyes began to narrow as he confronted the cats, questioning their authority regarding the claims they made about the great black dragon lying in wait. The impact of his fury was so immense that it caused the entire group of cats to collapse to the ground. Despite this, S.E. Jun appeared to embody the role of a leader, displaying an inner courage even as he felt on the verge of losing consciousness from the shock. The Bull King was aware that they had already been manipulated and promptly summoned Orin and his followers. Boeing, he conveyed to S.E. Jun that everything the Great Black Dragon had asserted was indeed true, pleading for mercy on behalf of the arrogant cat who had deceived them. Orin, the Black Dragon, realized that, as Theo had indicated, Scarum was truly the con artist, who had abandoned him, with his wife after swindling them out of their money. They had been left with nothing, and all he wished was for June to save their lives. However, this was merely the beginning of the actual plan, as as he June informed them that he would indeed spare their lives. Nevertheless, he was acutely aware that the Black Cat and his group had incurred significant debts, which led them down the path toward the Bull King. 
An explanation was provided to Orin, who was shocked to learn that he was the one managing the operations in the tower as a hobby. Everything related to Orin and his group involved consuming food and beverages from the stores of the Great Black as the dragon. Oring began to gaze at the stars. He noticed that the entire group of rabbits had arrived at the location, informing him that they owed approximately 500 tower coins due to the water and food they had requested. Furthermore, they were also required to pay fees for accommodation and cleaning, as well as for the illegal dumping of waste they had committed in the barren land. However, Suddenly the rabbit informed him that they no longer had any money to settle these debts. The terms regarding the bricks were nearly reaching a total of 100,000 pieces. Initially, Orin struggled to comprehend what the bricks were, but the bull king clarified that this was precisely what the shopkeepers meant when they stated that if Orin did not pay with money, they would have to settle their debts with their bodies. Oring was taken aback when the king informed him that their group of cats would need to produce 100,000 bricks in the barren, muddy ground. The cost would be covered by one of the pens. He was tasked with explaining how to create the perfect brick while observing others who were engaged in the process of making large bricks. Oring and the group watched him closely as they began to extract the purple hue from the faces of Vasi Jun, who started to clarify that, according to the agreement made by Oring, they were obligated to fulfill this task by producing 100,000 clay bricks. However, they were about to be even more astonished as the cats realized they were incapable of crafting such massive bricks. It was noted that by the time June arrived, they would only be able to produce approximately 10 bricks per day, indicating that it would take them 1,000 days to complete the task. The surprising aspect was that during this period, they would incur additional debts due to the cost of lodging and food, which the cats would need to manage. In order to produce more bricks, this process is set to continue indefinitely. The three cats displayed pale expressions. Upon realizing the gravity of their situation, they gasped collectively, and without delay, began to strike the ground in perfect unison. Their heads bowed. They faced a great black dragon that loomed over them with arrogance. However, this time, they were prepared to undertake any task they had previously avoided including engaging in brickmaking. This was precisely what Arbo wished to hear. He immediately leaned towards Arin, stating that it would provide them with an opportunity. As among the responsibilities he had to manage, the head of the distribution unit required assistance. I am already aware of the direction this is heading. Yet S.E. Jun continued to inform the black hat that their business objective would involve the head of distribution, overseeing the movement of goods within their packages and selling them. This task appeared quite straightforward for the black cats, who were accustomed to crafting giant bricks. They would need to serve as interns in the black dragon's distribution unit for a duration of 10,000 days. In June, he began to entice the cats by promising them a grilled fish each day, which caused Darren to start weeping. As we hear about these favorable circumstances, they informed S.E. June of their departure. Regardless of the situation, our young man ultimately agreed that the cats had conveyed this information to them. It was necessary for them to establish a new contract. As the cats owed a debt to our young man, they began to express their gratitude, believing that working for 10,000 days under someone's leadership was far superior to brickmaking. The nature of the work was not significantly different from that of a traveling merchant who could even address food-related issues. They had an individual named Boren who felt fortunate to be in this position. Furthermore, he would also have the opportunity to work under the auspices of the Black Back, a dragon that truly represented a privilege for all. The three merchants placed their cat's hands on the new contract. And finally, S.E. June was established to review its status. The cats received a congratulatory message and became new trainees on his farm. The Black Cat inquired of our young man about his actions, to which he replied that he should do it. But he turned away and mentioned, and the cat whose head was the distribution unit, which would inform them of their required actions. Has he finally begun to present the head of the distribution department, who was none other than Theo the Golden? The wandering merchant cat was akin to a figure of authority. If the entire world consisted of three cats, the merchants would be turned upside down, particularly for Auring, who struggled to comprehend his predicament. He immediately began to blame the golden cat, questioning what a vagabond like him was doing with the great black dragon. However, as soon as Theo heard this, he started to strike at him with his claws. Aaron urged him to show some respect, linking it to the head of distribution. Eventually, 
Aaron realized that he would have to work under the Golden Cat, and Theo welcomed the three trainees, introducing himself as the chief and the first subordinate of the Black Dragon. With a smile, Theo proudly informed the trio that from that moment on, they would have to listen to him just as they would to their stern leader. Theo desired a response from them, but Aaron and the other cat agreed with him.